uh, today the class will be on the topic suture materials it will be like a theoretical one and i think in uh, practical sessions in the words you will again uh, see and read and discuss about more about suture materials in the during word posting and discussion over there so i am now sharing my screen uh, let me know if you are able to uh, see it can you see uh, the my screen yes sir yes sir okay uh, today we will be discussing something about uh, suture materials mm. Okay, suture materials. Suture, surgical suture or suture materials, uh, they are devices that are used to hold the body tissues together after an injury or a surgery. And this application generally involves uh, using a needle with uh, an attached length of thread with it. Suture, uh, foreign uh, suture material, the desired characteristics are that they should be easy to handle, they should have a predictable behavior in uh, tissue, they should have a predictable tensile strength, they should be sterile, they glide through the tissue easily, they secure a knotting ability, they should be in, uh, inexpensive, they should have minimal tissue reaction, Non, uh, they should have a non capillary uh, action. They should be non allergenic, non carcinogenic, non electrolytic, and non shrinkage. These are the like um, ideal uh, characteristics uh, uh, for an uh, suture. But uh, the, none of the suture are uh, like uh, ideal uh, till now, uh, which have all of these characteristics. But uh, these characteristics are they are. Uh, desirable. Uh, there are five uh, main uh, characteristics of sutures uh, that we should know. One is the physical structure. Uh, it uh, is either a monofilament or multifilament. Monofilament means uh, uh, it, it has a, like the, it is made of a single thread. Whereas uh, multifilaments, in multifilament sutures, uh, there are uh, small, uh, tiny uh, sutures. They are braided and uh, they have multiple filaments in it and they are rolled uh, to make it a desirable size. The strength, uh, another characteristic of the strength of the suture, the tensile strength of a suture can be expressed as a force required to break it while uh, when pulling from the two ends apart. But it is only the uh, useful approximation as to its strength in the tissue, because what matters is materials in in vivo strength. The any sutures, uh, the whatever it is, in vivo uh, because of body reaction and all, the strength and all is different as uh, in a uh, in a in ideal or uh, in a lab or manufacturing uh, facility. Uh, conditions. Another behavior of a suture is a tensile behavior. A suture materials behave differently depending upon the deformability and flexibility. Some may be elastic, which means that where the material will return to its original length once the tension is released, while others may be plastic. In which uh, case, uh, this phenomena does not occur. Many synthetic materials demonstrate 
memory. Memory means that they keep curling up to in the shape they were adapted while packaging. Another uh, thing is uh, this absorbability. The sutures may be non-absorbable or absorbable. And this property must be taken into consideration while choosing suture material for specific wounds, closure or anastomosis. Another important behavior is biological behavior of the suture within the tissue depends upon the constitution of the raw material. The biological behavior will be dependent upon the raw material used to make the suture material. Uh, it can be biological or natural sutures such as cat gut are proteolized, but this involves a process that is not entirely predictable and can cause local irritation. So these are the like uh, cat gut is one of the example of biological or natural suture. They are proteolized uh, into the once they are in, into the body. Synthetic materials or polymers are hydrolyzed and their disappearance in the tissue is more predictable. However, this, uh, even if their uh, disappearance in the tissue is predictable, the presence of pus, urine or feces influences the final results and uh, renders the outcomes more unpredictable. So there are many ways to classify the sutures and these are the like uh, some of the most common ways. So the sutures can be classified into absorbable and uh, non-absorbable suture materials. They can be natural or synthetic. And we'll see the examples, uh, common examples of these sutures in the subsequent slides. They may be braided or twisted. They can be monofilament or multifilament. They may be coated or, or they may be uncoated. So these are the uh, some of the types uh, by which uh, Mm, uh, uh, the sutures material can be classified. There can be other types as well, uh, uh, other classifications as well, but these are the most important one. So we will discuss some of the commonly used sutures and uh, in brief. Uh, among the absorbable sutures, this plain cat gut and comic cat, cat gut, they are uh, absorbable as well as they are natural one. So plain cat gut is derived from submucosa of the jejunum of sheep. It is yellow white in color. It is absorbed by inflammatory reaction and phagocytosis. Absorption depend, uh, time is usually uh, seven days. It is absorbed by inflammatory reaction and phagocytosis and its absorption time is seven days. It is used for subcutaneous tissue, muscle and circumcision in children. And when this same cat gut is coated with chromic acid salt, it is uh, uh, known as chromic cat gut. And it is brown in color. Its absorption time is uh, 21 days. So a plain cat gut, uh, the absorption, uh, it will get absorbed in seven days, whereas the chromic cat gut uh, uh, is absorbed in 21 days. It is used for suturing muscle, fascia, external oblique aponeurosis, ligating pedicles, etc. Another uh, absorbable suture material is polyglactic acid. Uh, uh, the brand name is Bicryl. It is uh, produced by a company, Ethicon, Johnson & Johnson. But uh, instead of, it is better to call it polyglactic acid. It's a scientific name uh, or a generic name. Uh, it is a synthetic absorbable suture material. It gets absorbed in 90 days. And uh, uh, it is synthetic. It is uh, uh, as well, it is a braided or multifilament suture and uh, it is absorbable suture. So same suture have, can be placed into different classifications, uh, which we discussed earlier. The absorption is by hydrolysis. It is violet in color. Uh, it is multifilament and braided. And it is very good suture material for bowel anastomosis, suturing muscle closing of the peritoneum. Similarly, these are other absorbable sutures like polyglycolic acid. It is a synthetic absorbable suture material. It is creamy yellow in color. It is braided. Similarly, this is a, another is polyglyconate uh, known as Maxon. It is absorbable suture, but it is a monofilament suture. 
so uh, what when to use absorbable and non absorbable either monofilament or multifilament will depend upon the tissue we are uh, applying uh, tissue which we are repairing another uh, uh, absorbable synthetic suture is polydioxin suture material also known as pds and it is also absorbable suture material but again it is a monofilament uh, suture but it is uh, like uh, costlier than the bicryl and other sutures another uh, examples of absorbable suture are polyglycaprone it is a monofilament or a glyco or a glycomer it is also a monofilament suture the advantage of monofilament suture is that they are uh, they get they pass through the tissue smoothly because they are made up of a single uh, suture material whereas in a case of uh, braided or multifilament suture the um, passage of the suture material through the tissue is rough because the surface is not smooth uh, as that of a this uh, monofilament suture so um, when uh, uh, so that uh, is a difference between the uh, monofilament and multifilament sutures and again there are some other uh, differences like multifilament sutures since there are uh, they are made of thousands of threads tied uh, they are braiding braided together so there is a tendency of the bacterial uh, bacterial overgrowth or bacterial retention uh, into the sutures as well whereas in monofilament sutures they are smooth and uh, so the bacteria tend to uh, uh, the, the tendency of bacteria uh, to remain in the suture is less in case of monofilament suture so these are some of the examples where we use absorbable sutures like in bowel anastomosis we use absorbable sutures in any bowel anastomosis it can be gastrointestinal resection anastomosis of uh, small bowel or colonic anastomosis in case of polycystic so jejunostomy hepatico jejunostomy pancreatic jejunostomy we use absorbable suture bicryl or now it is preferred to use monofilament sutures which we uh, talked earlier like pds or a maxon suture and uh, in suturing uh, this absorbable sutures are also uh, used in suturing muscle fascia peritoneum subcutaneous tissue in ligating pedicle and in circumcision so now we we'll discuss some in brief some of the non absorbable suture materials uh, silk is uh, one of them it is a natural suture uh, it is a multifilament braided non absorbable suture material derived from cocoon of a silkworm larva it is black in color it is coated uh, suture material to reduce capillary action uh, silk is uh, is classified as a non absorbable suture but in a long run uh, maybe in a, uh, many years uh, because it is a natural suture there is tendency uh, that some of the part of uh, the part of the silk will be resolved in um, long run another example of uh, non absorbable suture is uh, polypropylene suture uh, this is also known as polyene suture it is a synthetic it is a monofilament suture material it is blue in color it has a high uh, memory the memory of the suture material is recoiling tendency after removal from the packet ideally the suture material should have a low memory but this polyin has a high memory sometimes uh, in case of hernia plasty and hernia uh, we use polyin mesh the same suture material is uh, like uh, is woven into a mesh and we place it in uh, uh, case of hernia surgery another examples uh, other examples of uh, non absorbable suture materials are polyethylene also known as ethylene is a synthetic monofilament non absorbable suture material it is black in color cotton is also a uh, multifilament suture it is also non absorbable suture similarly other uh, non absorbable sutures are linen steel polyester polyamide nylon so many uh, things have been tried and used Uh, in uh, as a suture materials but in our practice most commonly used sutures are this chromic catgut bicryl this polyglycolic acid polyglyconate maxon and pds 
and uh, for fine suture uh, to get a scarless um, uh, repair, we sometimes also use this monoquill, which is a polyglycaprion. And among the non absorbable sutures, uh, most commonly used sutures are silk, this polypropylene, polyethylene. These are the most commonly used uh, in our practice. So non absorbable suture, suture materials, they are used in case of hernioraphy surgery, for closure of abdomen after laparotomy. And uh, nowadays, uh, for closure of uh, abdomen after laparotomy, we also use delayed absorbable sutures. Do, those are like PDS or Maxon. Uh, for vascular anastomosis, we always use non absorbable sutures. For nerve suturing, tendon suturing, we need to uh, use uh, uh, non absorbable sutures. For tension suturing in abdomen and for suturing skin, we use non absorbable sutures. The numbering of suture is like, is like this. It can be two, one, zero, one, two, three. Uh, two means two, zero, one means. Mm, uh, this is uh, called like this two is called as number two. This is called as number one, then zero, and one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, zero, and so on. So the two, number two, is thickest, uh, uh, thick suture. So as the it goes to zero, the it becomes thin and thin. And from zero again is one zero two zero three zero four zero. The um, thickness of the uh, suture material is decreased. So nine O suture is finest, is thinnest of the suture, whereas two is the thickest of the suture. So the thick sutures are used for like pedicle ligation, and this um, two zero three zero four zero they can be used for bowel anastomosis. And uh, for vascular anastomosis, we use usually use five zero, six zero, sometimes seven zero, depending upon the uh, caliber or lumen of the um, vessels we are dealing with. And for uh, like ophthalmic surgery and all, very fine sutures are used nine zero. They are difficult to see with the naked eye, so they require the operating microscope to be, uh, to apply this suture properly. So the, the thing you should remember is that uh, the number one, number two, number one are the thickest one. And, and uh, as we go downward from one zero, two zero, three zero, the um, thickness of the suture decreases. So higher the zero, the, the uh, thinner the suture material is. So these are, this is the chart from uh, Belly and Love. Uh, you can always uh, have a look uh, it in uh, in it. Uh, these are the like uh, uh, this is chart showing the suture materials, their types, raw material, their tensile strength, absorption rate, and the detail about each of them. So, uh, which we have discussed in brief, uh, I just wanted to show you this chart. Uh, these are the uh, chart for uh, this is the chart for observable ones. So you need to know when, like, uh, what are the like this uh, tensile strength? Uh, how many days they last, and how they are absorbed, and the, how, how much the tissue reaction is, etc. And these are the uh, this chart shows the different uh, things we need to know about a suture. Similarly, this is these are again the this is again the chart of the absorbable ones. So this is again chart from the uh, belly and lob. This, uh, this shows the uh, details about the non-absorbable suture. And uh, uh, in a free time, you have to go through this chart uh, once. So now let's come to needle. Uh, the needles have like uh, the, the suture are usually attached to a needle. And uh, so the needle has a like, um, uh, three parts, swazed end, and this part is called body, and the tip is called needle point. So these are the needles, uh, eyed needles. They are more traumatic and only thread through once. Uh, suture on the reel uh, are used uh, in this type of needle. They tend to unthread itself easily. 
And these are uh, nowadays in practice, we don't use this type of needles. But if you happen to visit some of the like mm, health post or a primary health center, you may see uh, these types of needles being used uh, in uh, repairing wounds as well. So these are the types of needles. This is the type of the needle which are used now, uh, nowadays. The thread are already fitted into the end of the um, needle and it is called a swatched on needle. They are much less traumatic, but they are expensive uh, and uh, they are uh, sterilized. The points of the needle can be of different type. It can be taper or traumatic ones. Uh, they are used for internal organs in the so here we can see that there is a point. Uh, the tip of the point is a, a round one, and the body. Uh, so this is this is an atraumatic internal organs. For internal or organs, we use this type of uh, needle. Similarly, uh, this is a cutting needle. Like when we are uh, uh, using it in a tough structures like skin or tendons. And then we need to have a cutting point of the mm, needle so that uh, the skin is very tough structure. So with the, this sort of needle, it is very difficult to uh, pass the needle through the skin. So here we need a pointed one or a cutting one. So in the, the tip of the uh, pointed needle is like this. It is sharp uh, at, the, at the point so it can go through the top structure easily. Similarly, these are again like uh, same, same, similar example. The tip of the uh, is round, round body needle. There's a tip is pointed only in the cutting needle. It is like uh, uh, pointed at the, uh, at the upper end. And there's also something called reverse cutting in which the point is towards the backwards of the needle. And these are again the taper cut different types but most commonly used one are this round body, taper cut and uh, uh, cutting needles. So same suture material can be like, uh, uh, this is during manufacture, the same suture material can be uh, combined with different types of uh, uh, needles. So uh, we, we choose the material as uh, uh, based upon the tissue we are uh, going to apply uh, apply it. So when we are uh, going to apply the suture in a top structures like skin, fascia, tendons, then we need to have a uh, this uh, uh, cutting needles. But when we are applying the sutures to bowel, bowels or uh, doing a ball anastomosis, then we, we should have a like uh, uh, non-cutting needles or a round body needles. The needles can be of different shape. They can be three eighths of a circle, half of the circle straight, or they can be J shape, depending upon the um, uh, tissue we are dealing with uh, in the area of our surgery. So these are, these are again the examples of the different types of needle. So we have to choose uh, needles, suture material, according to its shape, according to the shape of the needle, type of the needle, size of the needle, and then the suture material itself. So nowadays there are some of the alternatives to suture material. They are skin adhesive tapes, tissue glue. This is based upon the solution of n butyryl to cyanoacrylate monomer. This is something similar to the super glue we, we used in day-to-day -day practice. And then uh, there are uh, something called staples and stapling devices. These are uh, alternative methods to the sutures. These are the like, this is the skin adhesive strip, also known as steri strips. Uh, if the, there is superficial wound, uh, without much ga gapping, then this can be applied like this to instead of a suture. So it becomes like a, a painless uh, procedure and uh, the scar is also better with uh, this type of strips. So this is a, a photograph of a, this tissue glue. And sometimes uh, even in this sort of a wound, 
uh, which is superficial instead of applying sutures a glue can be applied the glue will uh, uh, like hold the uh, skin or the tissue together and later on uh, there will be healing uh, uh, of the tissue this is the example of stapler and this is a, this is a skin stapler this can be applied uh, to the skin incisions uh, incisions and it is uh, practice um, in uh, our surgical practice as well here uh, uh, the uh, thing is that it is expensive but it is like uh, uh, easy to apply and you can uh, easy and fast to apply so the uh, time uh, which we take to suture the skin is much less over here so again uh, these are the various uh, stapling devices they can be used uh, instead of suture uh, to uh, um, like to approximate the tissue this first one is transverse anastomosis this sees the tissue these are on this uh, b level uh, the instrument level b is gia this is known as gastrointestinal anastomosis here uh, uh, we can will show you uh, you during the practical classes this instrument uh, uh, you have to see as well this is used to cut as well as uh, to suture or the approximate uh, the intestine together and this is a circular stapler this is again uh, uh, alternative to the uh, conventional sutures thank you this is uh, something uh, in brief about the suture materials now if you have some uh, like uh, i'll show you some of the sutures uh, in uh, suture packets so uh, can you see this uh, these are the, the suture materials they come in, in this sort of packets are you able to see the video yes sir yes, yes sir mm, okay i okay uh, here uh, the, all of the information of the sutures are actually written over uh, in the packets now if you see carefully uh, here uh, the this is here uh, it's written 30 30 is the size of the, uh, the uh, thread the it's uh, and uh, it is written here absorbable surgical suture and uh, synthetic it is a synthetic one similarly we can see it is a round bodied needle this is the needle and this is the shape of the needle uh, and the shape of the needle as well uh, so it is a half circle round bodied needle similarly the there is written the 70 cm this is the length of the uh, uh, needle and uh, this is uh, the material is polyglycolic acid and it is uh, like uh, the brand so it's a branded one so it is uh, here it is written a bicryl or uh, bicryl plus in the plus one they have coated the bicryl with a antibiotic tissue so antibiotic uh, solution so they call it a, as a uh, bicryl plus so it is again if you see here in detail it is written it is a braided uh, so uh, coated one and uh, it's a polygalactin 910 violet so every information uh, everything which we discussed in the class is written in each and every packets of the suture so this is again a this is a silk suture uh it's a size is 20 and again it is a non absorbable suture uh it is a braided one and everything uh, we need to know is written here and these are sterilized one they are usually sterilized by gamma radiation in the factory so uh, whenever you are in wards or in uh, or in inside the operation theater you can ask uh, whosoever is there 
uh, to show you these packets and you can have a look at them yourself. Now, if you have some question, I think we have only a few minutes left for this session, around five minutes. If you have some question and query, you can ask now. Thanks, sir. sir. Multi-filament yeah. uh, or monofilament? Multi-filament and monofilament, okay. Uh, Multi-filament means like something like this. Uh, uh, sorry, polyfilament. Uh, uh, monofilament means something like this. So there is only one thread. The whole of the suture is made up of a single thread. In case of multi-filament, I'll just open up this uh, this one and show you. This is a silk suture and it is a multi-filament suture. So if we see, uh, I don't know if it, uh, it will be clear from here or not. Uh, but uh, once you are in OR or ward, you can like, uh, now this is a single thread. Are you able to see it? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah, this is silk one. But uh, if you see carefully, just I am just unfolding it at the end. If you see here carefully, uh, there are multiple uh, threads. Can you appreciate that? Yes, sir, yes. Yeah, so these multiple small tiny threads are they are braided together to make a single suture. So this is the uh, example of multi-filament. So there are multiple filaments in the suture material. Whereas in uh, monofilament, it will be uh, made up of a single thread itself. So there will be no tiny threads like this in case of a uh, monofilament suture. Here again, you can see it, the, this suture, it, even if it appears a single one, if you see carefully, there are many tiny threads that are woven together to make a single suture. So these are the, this is called as uh, this is the example of a multi-filament suture. Okay, any more query? Sir, the COVID and stapler are multiple uses, okay? single uses, sir? So that is uh, actually sterilized one. This is for a single uh, use, but they have around 35 staples in, uh, in that uh, one, uh, one instrument. Now, if we have facility to re-sterilize it, we can use it another time as well. In our practice in our Nepal, uh, things we tend to, many things we tend to reuse. So if that is uh, not finished in a single patient, the one card, one uh, stapler, it contains 35 staples. So in uh, our day-to-day -day practice also, we you reuse it sometimes. But another uh, staple devices uh, like gastrointestinal anastomosis and all those, they are single use. They cannot be reused. The skin stapler can be reused after st proper sterilization. Thank you, sir. Do we have two minutes more left. Any question? Sir, braided and twisted. Twisted and braided, uh, like uh, uh, there is some another uh, suture called um, uh, ethibond and all. There is, I think, used in uh, orthopedics one. In braided suture, uh, in twisted, the, the only difference is uh, the way they are woven together. There is nothing much difference between that. Uh, the way they are woven together, uh, that is difference in braided and twisted one. But uh, again, the monofilament and all, they are same. The method of preparing the suture is different in twisted and uh, case of a braided suture. Here, uh, this is the example of braided one. And everything is usually actually written in the packet itself. No? Thank you, sir. Okay, one minute is left. Any more query? Okay, if there are no question, I think we can end up the session here. Uh, tomorrow morning, Dr. Rupes from 8 to 9, uh, uh, Dr. Rupes will take the class. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, okay good day. Goodbye.